In today's video, I'll be showing you guys the easiest way to create the most simple platformer in Scratch. All right, so let's get started. So I have three sprites right now. The first one's called player, the second one's called platform, and the third one's called spikes. And I already did the art for it like beforehand. And this is just my player. It's like a nice, cute little cube. And this is my platform. All right, I'm just gonna drag it down here. And I can position that at X zero and Y zero. And yeah, that's all we're gonna do for the with the platform sprites for now. You can just leave this to how, where it is. You don't really need to mess with that right now. But now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the code for the player. The first thing you're gonna need to do is drag out a one green flag clicked, and we're gonna show the sprite. We go to front layer, and we're, now we're gonna create some variables. Well, I can delete this my variable. I don't need it. First variable we're gonna create is gonna be called x velocity. And I'm just doing vel for short and it's for the sprite only. And then we're gonna create another one called y velocity for the sprite only. Now we're gonna create another variable called last val, which is short for last value for the sprite only. And another one called falling with a question mark for the sprite only. And then we're gonna create another variable called level. And this one is gonna be for all sprites. It's just gonna let us know what level we are on when we're playing the game. Now you can unselect all those variables you don't need any of them to show up right now so after you uh, you're done creating those drag this out right here and grab a set x velocity to zero and set the y velocity to zero when the game start starting or what you can do is drag this out like from here and then grab a broadcast and put a, a reset so when green flag clicked it's going to broadcast a reset and it's just going to reset everything right here it's going to reset all the variables and stuff we can also set level to one right here and yeah and now underneath the reset we can broadcast another another message and call it start game and when i receive start game you can drag that out right here now we're going to start coding under this script the first thing we're going to do is grab a forever loop we're going to make a block and we're going to call it player Oh my god. Player physics. I'm gonna do two slashes and just say move speed with a colon and then I can copy that. Add an input move speed. Move the colon. I'm add a text label and I'm gonna call this friction the colon and copy that. Input friction move the colon text label. Now we can add gravity. Gravity. Copy that. Paste it. And then the last one we can add is jump height and then you can add another colon and then go and paste it and remove the colon so and you don't have to click run on that screen refresh is fine so now we have this really big layer physics block but now let's just put in the values for it so the move speed i'm gonna want the move speed to be two the friction is gonna be 0 0.8 and the gravity is gonna be about negative one and a half and the jump height is gonna be 15. so now we're gonna start coding the player okay so now we're gonna start coding the player physics i'm gonna finish coding it and then i'll explain the code to you guys okay so i'm done coding the basic left and right movement for the player but if i click the green flag none of it's gonna work right now because you're missing the most important piece of code and that's basically the code that we're missing is the change x by and the change y by we need to like put this in the forever loop for start game and we're going to change x by the x velocity and change y by the y velocity so now if i click this uh the green flag then if i use w i can move around and if i use hierarchies i can also move around and left right and let me just change this to negative 90 so try that again now it, yeah now it changes directions and looks the other way and if i use uh, the air uh, w WASD keys or the arrow keys. All right, so basically what I did is I set the rotation style to left, left and right, so it only faces left or right. And I set the X velocity to the X velocity times friction because this is what adds friction to the game. Like it, when I move, it doesn't just stop all of a sudden. It kind of slowly slows down and then stops. So if I were to remove this, oh my bad. If I was to remove this, it would go really fast and it wouldn't be controlled. Let me just reposition it. Okay. If I were to move this now, look how fast it goes and it just keeps going, it doesn't stop. That's why we need this adds friction. And this is basically the moving part. It's if key D is pressed or 
right arrow's press is going to change the x velocity by move speed which is positive two so it's going to move in the right it's going to move towards right because since it's a positive number it goes to the right side and it's going to point in direction 90 which is over here and then this if key a press or, or left arrow press is basically the opposite and the opposite of right is left so it's going to move left that's why i have move speed multiplied by negative one since if i put two in there if i just didn't put that in there it would just go the same way as well it would go the same way see i'm pressing that it's going the same way so i have to put multiply by negative one because then it goes to the opposite side and i put point in direction negative 90 so it faces the opposite way now if i just position this at zero zero now you can see everything is working fine all right so the next thing we're going to add is gravity to do that i'm going to change the y velocity okay change y velocity by not by one but by gravity so it's always falling to the ground so when we jump it brings us back down to the ground but the thing is right now it's just going through the platform not like we're not stopping when we touch it so we need to code it so it stops when we touch it so basically to do that i'm gonna make a new custom block it's gonna be called uh collision and i'm gonna do two slashes and i'm gonna say depths right like that and copy that and then make an input and paste steps and remove the colon and now that i have that i can go and put this inside here and inside that i'm gonna do grab a plus operator and addition operator then i'm gonna grab a absolute value operator and put it in both the plus operators and then i'm gonna do find the absolute value of the x velocity and the y velocity so if we put that over here now we can start coding the collision okay so now i have all the code done for the collision but before i explain all this you can take this the change x by and the change y by the x and y velocity you can take this and just dump it right here you don't need that anymore since now we have this this is our new version of that and this also helps with the collision so we no longer need that script you can throw that away okay so i can't really explain this code because it's not my code since i borrowed it from griff patch but if you want a full explanation of this code you can go watch this video and i'll link that in the description okay so if i click the green flag our player can now move left and right and it's touching the ground but one thing that our player doesn't have is jumping now right now we're just stuck to the ground and we can't get any higher than it so now to add jumping what i can do is I can duplicate this put this underneath here and if key w is press if key w is press or key up arrow is press i can set my y velocity to the jump height i'm using set instead of change because if i do change it changes it slowly and if i do set it's just, just gonna go there it's just gonna jump up all of a sudden that's what we want so if i do if I press the up arrow right now i jump up and then i fall down but one issue that i have is if i hold the up arrow i'm just flying up and i can just stay there forever until i let go and i can also press it multiple times and that's not what we want what we can do is we can put an if statement right here between the set y to last val and the set y velocity to zero and in that statement we can put if the y velocity is less than zero then we can set the falling to zero the falling variable that we created and we've already set it to one here so now it's setting it to zero but one important thing I forgot to mention is with this collision block, make sure to make this run without screen refresh because if you don't, then it won't work. It's moving really slow right now because it's refreshing the screen every time to run the check to see if we're colliding. So if you do run without screen refresh, it will work perfectly fine and it won't have any lag or it won't slow down a lot. So that's very, very important. Make sure to click run without screen refresh. Okay, so anyways, next step is inside here we can only jump if the falling if falling is less than three so basically this allows us to not just constantly be spamming jump in air and just keep flying up like we were be like we were able to do before so now if i jump i can only jump once and if i hold down the jump key 
I'm still only jumping once. Okay, so now that we fixed that, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make use of these spikes right here and make them like dangerous. So if our player touches them, uh, we will respawn back at the respawn point, which I should probably set right now. So I'm just gonna make the player go to negative 204 and 100 when they start. So every time, I'm also gonna make a face direction 90. So every time we click the green flag, we spawn right here and we're falling from the sky. So that's nice. So now I'm gonna start coding this. There's not much code that I need to do here. All I need to do is kind of like drag this right here. And if I zoom in, okay, that's the perfect spot. And I can grab a when I receive start game show i'm gonna go to the position i'm at right now and i'm gonna go to the front layer that's all. that's really all we need to do for now or actually no one more thing we can also switch costume to level that'll be that'll come in handy once we have multiple levels and we have to like position these in different places okay so now i can go back here i'm gonna go back in this start game loop the forever loop I'm gonna create a new block and I'm gonna call it check and I'm gonna do two slashes I'm gonna say check if touching bikes then we're gonna add a boolean and we're gonna copy that I'll just type it in if touching spikes I can click okay I can drag that out to right here and I can put check if touching spikes right here and inside that I can put touching spikes so now I can grab an if statement and under the custom block I can put if touching spikes in here. So if we're touching spikes then we can go here, no, no we can send the player back to its original position which was right here except maybe not as high up just y0. So if I try that, if I touch the spikes. I'm gonna get sent back here, but just not from all the way up there. If I go here, I'm gonna get sent back here. All right, so the next thing we're gonna add is we're gonna wanna be able to go to the next level every time. So the easiest way to do this is when our X velocity, or not our X velocity, when our X position is at a certain area, we should just be able to go and it'll transport us to the next level and it'll change level by one. So an easy way to do that, to just see what your the player's X position is, is inside this forever loop you can grab uh go to the look section and say when the player is always going to be saying it's x position so now the player okay yeah now it's forever reading its x position now it stops at about 285 but as you can see i just fell right there so i need to stop the player from falling first so to fix that i can just add a block right here okay instead of using costumes I can just go here and inside the player physics I can do if the let me spawn the player here if the x position of player is the x position of the player is less than negative two two three then we can set the x velocity to five so it will push it back in the opposite way. So if I try going here, it can't go past there, it's just gonna keep pushing me back so I can no longer fall through. Now let's continue on with the changing levels part when i'm like about like right here i wanted to switch levels so that's basically 238 so inside i think i'll make a new custom block for it i'm gonna do check if next level and copy that okay i'm just gonna copy yeah copy that i'll make a boolean another boolean and put copy that in there and then i can click ok I'll drag that down right here and I'll put this check if next level right there. And I'm gonna check if the X position is greater than 238. So we're gonna do one number less than that, which is 237. Then I can just duplicate this and do it like that. So if and I can remove if touching spikes and replace it with if next level. So now if I go near the edge, it's gonna now gonna spawn me back there. And another thing I need to do is we're gonna change level by one. So if it's, let me just make that visible right now. Now I'm touching there. It, right now it's level one. If I touch it, now it's level two. 
now it's level 3. Alright, I'm almost done with this tutorial. The very last part is I'm just gonna create a, a couple levels. I'm just gonna name this one. I'm gonna name this one and two. And I'm gonna make each of them different. Like this is gonna be one platform. They're gonna be the other. And you have to kinda jump over this smaller platform right here. One of the levels. And I can also drag the code that was in here and put it in here. But right now it's level one. Like, okay, I can also remove that. Right now it's level one. And I'm starting out right here. And if I touch the spikes, I start to die. And if I go right here, and then it's level two, but it didn't change costume. So we need to fix that. To fix that, we can put a forever loop inside here for the change costume and a forever loop inside here. So if I try that again, if I go here, now we're changing costumes and now we're on the other side now we're right here and so what we can do with this one is okay wait never mind i can make this go to zero zero as well and i can just position it in the way i want it the level so i can just put it down here and i can duplicate that so let me go to, let me just go to level two really quickly and i can just make it go up instead okay so now it's all the way up there and if i go to the next level i'm right here and if I go right here, I die and I respawn back there. And if I go here, it's the next level. But it just teleported me back here. Since I haven't made another sprite for that yet. So that is going to be it for this tutorial. This isn't like any series or anything. This is the only this is the only episode for this tutorial. I just wanted to show you guys the basics on how to create platformer. And this video is mainly for beginners. So if you're like already advanced at Scratch, this tutorial probably isn't for you and you probably already know how to make this. But if you're a beginner and you just started getting into Scratch, making a platform is like one of the best ideas for your first game because it's very popular and many people will play it. But one thing I do recommend is not making it generic. Like I made a very like generic and plain one right here. But what I recommend doing is after you follow this tutorial, you should change it and add your own things. Like maybe make different like enemies and stuff and like instead of using spikes use something else like lava or something and make your own character and background I, I haven't really made a background but i could add like whatever i want for a background like maybe that and do some of that and make that transparent now i already have a background that looks pretty nice so it's really easy and this is just like a starter pack for a bunch of beginners and you can use this and create your own games so anyways thanks for watching the video don't forget to like subscribe and comment and just comment what you guys want for the next tutorial.